I need to put this back in the three jaw chuck running through. Right, as you can see it's it's got the wobbles, it's not true. Simple way of throwing it up is to use this tool I've showed it before. Very simple in operation. All I do is fetch the ball bearing in, the ball racing, it touches the job, it's running nice and true there now. All I need to do is nip the chuck up and that's my job running in line. And it doesn't damage the job. I could put a clock cage on there, but I can show you it is running true. Right, I've got quite an interesting setup going on here. Uh, what I've done, I've transferred the chuck from the lathe with the piece we're working on onto the homemade dividing head. Onto the back of the homemade dividing head, I've mounted a CD disc. To that, I've glued on degree wheel, degree disc. The sort that of, I've just downloaded off the internet, it's the sort of thing you would use for timing in uh, a car engine camshaft. I've got a pointer there, so you can see what the grey wheel, and with some reasonable accuracy, we can line up the point of that, we'll line up that point to our degrees. And we can lock off for a spindle, and when we come to this end, all it's for is so we can accurately drill our holes. To lock what die in. All I need to do, I need to find out, I need to be able to drill the holes for the grub screws for these. There's one there that would split the die and two there which clamp it into place. These two here will be at 90 degrees which makes the one in the centre 45. So we'll drill that one first then go 45 either way. This is all running parallel to our table. What we need to do now is find the centre of our job in relationship to what chuck. We'll do a main edge find that come pushing tool which is all it's just a bearing that you it's fastened on the end of a shaft. So you can stop that. So what we'll do we'll wind it out until it touches the job. It's touching there, it's just starting to slow down. Right, we'll zero the Y axis on my DRO. Go around and do the same thing to the other side. That's it there. So we've got a reading of 61.5. We'll half that. That's 30.75. We'll dial in 30.75 Right, and that puts the tool exactly in the centre of the job Right, I need to find the end of that now That's it there That's a 2 mil pin And when the die's in there, it's, it's level with the end The die is 11mm thick, so if we go 5.5, that'll put where we want our hole. 5.5. We can lock the table off at that. So that's the X and Y axis locked. Now we can drill one hole, turn it round 45 degrees, back to zero, 45, drill and tap by three holes. I turn this to zero, zero on the protractor on the end. Which is there, and lock up the spindle. So that's going to be the mark for our first our first hole. We're going to put 4mm grub screws in here because I've got some 4mm grub screws. Centre drill mark first. My 4mm tap and drill.
four mil top. Okay, so that's our first hole drilled and tapped. Now we need to turn this 45 degrees to drill the other one. 45 back that way and we have to go over two holes in 90 degrees to each other. Right, so I've loosened my spindle out off. Simple case, 10, 20, 30, 40. And looking dead in line with it. 45 degrees. It's not precision, but I bet it's within half a degree. So I've got spins locked off and put a centre drill back in. Take a look a little bit. Right, and we'll have four mil top. Right now, 45 degrees the other way, so we'll loosen that off. Back to zero. Forty-five. Lock the spindle off. Then we're ready to drill and tap the last one. I need some shorter grub screws. I went up from four. I did them five, four, four didn't seem right, but five, five looks right and it feels right. And you can tighten them up. No problem. That's plenty of depth of thread in there. So that's one end, one end completed. I need to remount this back into the chuck to machine the other end. So what I'll do, or what I can do, I've got it mounted on the mounted on the mandrel made, which should line it up into the centre of the chuck. I don't want to damage the finish we've put on there. So what I can do, I can put some brass shim stock underneath the the jaws will stop and cause any damage to a nicely machined surface. I'll give that a nip. I don't know how well this will work, it should it should line it up reasonably accurately. Start up and have a look. It's pretty good, I put a clock here, you're not the interest. It's within a thou, thou and a half, which is near enough for what what we're gonna be doing with it. I'm going to part this off to length. I could just machine that face down, but I'll do a little bit of a little bit of video on parting off. A lot of people seem to have problems with parting off, myself included. This is a commercial parting tool. It's a tip tool. It's set dead on centre height or very very slightly below. The next thing you must make sure it's set square to the job. So if we loosen off our tool post, we can see we can turn it. Use a square. Right, so it's square to the job. Rigidity is the most important thing in parting off. Things must be rigid, nice and short. That's where I want to part it. 
Now what I've done, I've put a tail stock center in. Obviously you can't leave it in all the time, but you can leave it in until you get most of the way through. I'm going to run the lathe and back here, nice and slow. And I'm also going to put cotton water on, white water, just to give it every possible chance. The carriage is also locked off, so it can't move. What a lot of people do when they're parting off, when the tool starts to make a noise and protest, they back off. That's when the tool jams and breaks quite often. It's better to carry on, wind the tool in a bit harder, use a bit of bottle, wind it in harder and you'll find it'll cut. And once it cuts, don't stop, keep going. Starting to cut there, keep the nice gentle pressure on. The thing we're parting off is you're taking a very, very broad cut, very deep cut. Especially with a white parting tool like this. What you find is you're cutting. What you find is it's cutting, as it gets further in, you've got to speed the lathe up to keep your surface speed going. Tailstock off. I was going to say I'd back the tailstock centre off until it wasn't actually turning, it was just, just supporting it. It's just part of it's not a one level finish, but it's a decent finish. It's a lot easier than using a hacksaw. We'll put a facing cut across there now. And the reason I turn it off, these make nice spacers, they're good for clamping things down on the milling machine. It would be a shame to waste that bit of stock by turning it away. Right, we're just going to machine here in the bar square. I'm using that high speed steel tool again because I've got an excellent result with it. put a nice finish on that high speed steel tool got the grain just right for this particular piece of material right what we're going to do now is bore a recess in here for the smaller dies I think they're inch diameter we need some we need some longer grub screws uh, longer idiots 